death on the cross. Where were they? I've been with you so long. I've been with you so long. Why did Jesus have to say that? I've poured my life. I've showed you signs. How come the signs weren't good enough? How come they didn't keep their heart? How come they rejected him and left? And left him there abandoned on the cross. Except for his brother and his mom. How come he was left? When I said last night in the music, maybe we've lost our name. That's the power of Jesus' life. That's the power of Paul's life. They never lost their name. The world walked up to Jesus many times and tried to get him. The devil walked up to him and tried to change his name. Tried to walk in there and manipulate him. The world tried to walk up. His disciples tried to change his destiny and name. But he walked, he continually walked in that calling. Where have you kept me? And he waited patiently. Get behind me, Satan. Get out of here. Why are you speaking this stuff? I think Jesus, I think Jesus knew Peter wouldn't be there at the cross that day. But the cool thing about Jesus is he was okay with it. There wasn't even a frustration or a preemptive strike against the disciples. I know you're all going to leave me. Somehow he knew that if he would just walk in it, they all would come back and follow more passionately after they left him. If he just, if he just be, all it takes is one man, like Paul or Jesus, that will fight long enough and stay in there long enough and push hard enough, to be able to push through what everybody says at the moment that they can't stand in order to break through something that everybody later will run through. That's the power of the wilderness and the desert. God loves deserts and he loves wildernesses. Why? Because man's hands aren't in them. But what we do is now we write books and make money off of Jesus' name calling him a CEO. Give me a freaking break. Jesus was no CEO. He didn't have the mindset of the American institution of economy behind what he did. You want to follow Jesus, you will ruin your life for the economy of America. You want to follow Jesus, you'll ruin everything. Does that mean that you should never get educated? No. But let education be what education is. It's just to make money and to be in the system of America. Now, if you want to get an education on something like art or something like that, everybody will look at you and go, you're crazy, just like theology. The heck you do. So let it be what it is. What is inevitable is that there are people in this room that if you take your talent and you use it and manipulate it and work it, you'll probably do something in America. It's not inevitable. I mean, it's not uninevitable for me to, uh, to uh, have my gift and make CDs and sell lots of them. I don't even have to do anything to do that because it's my calling. I don't even have to have, you know, I don't even have to work the system. I've never even called a church. I've never even called a record company. Never asked for distribution. Not once. Not once. Now, when my father-in-law told me not to do that the first time, I said, you're crazy. Now I say, thank you, Jesus, that he spoke the truth into my life, and that truth has set me free. I don't have to play any games. I'm not doing what I'm doing because I played a game or manipulated or pushed the right buttons on a CD format or mixed it correctly or did something just right so that people would like it. I've never spent more than $12,000 on one single record that's out. You know why? Because I came to this idea, I said, wouldn't it be cool if I just went into the studio and just sang the songs? And then I just put them out. And nobody will look at it as some great phenomenal piece of artwork. They'll just, well, you know what's actually happening? 
Some people actually come and say, there are things on there that are absolutely powerful pieces of artwork. How does that happen? It happens just like Michelangelo did it. Do you think he was like asking for everybody's opinion while he was painting? So what do you think of that? Get the Pope. Get everybody in here. It's asking what you think of this. Oh, should I scratch that part? Change it up a little bit? Make it better for you? Why do we do that stuff? We do it because it's a game. But if we believed in Jesus, if we truly believed on him, that he was the truth and he was the way and he was the life, if we believed, we wouldn't play those games. The more I love you, the less I'll be loved. Let me just tell you this. What was for the prophets, what was for Abraham, what was for Isaac, what was for Jacob, what was for Samuel, what was for the father, all through the prophets, read about him. This is the one that pours his life out. And the more he pours his life out, the less Israel loves him. I want relationship with you. You don't want relationship with me. You want me to save your rear when you're in trouble and then you want to take the credit for it. And that's how we are. That's what we do. And the Lord, he says, what I'm looking for is a generation of fathers, a real generation of apostles and prophets in the land. People that aren't afraid to be vulnerable. My wife was in uh, Central Bible College. And I'll just say the name. Because it's what it is. And it's okay, because I'm a freak too. So just admit that you're a freak. Get rid of all that junk. And God will set you free. But my wife learned at Central Bible College, she goes to a class on, on how to be a pastor's wife. And in this class, they taught her this. She has the notes. They taught her, um, you know, how to make really wealthy looking meals on a cheap budget. How to, um, how to dress. How to uh, sit on the platform appropriately. I'm serious. They taught her. They said to her one day, and she came home crying, and I said, you better get out of this class. They, they taught her one day, I can't even believe this, has come out of a kingdom, inst well, no, it's just church crap institution. It's not the kingdom. I'm just being honest. That's crap. And, I, and the things that I've said that are anything like it, it's crap too, and don't listen to it, just like you were talking about. I cannot believe this, that they would say this. That they would say to my wife, a young lady becoming a pastor's wife, if your husband has an affair, it's because you didn't get up in the morning and look beautiful. You need get up every morning, make yourself look pretty, and get him breakfast. And that is what, that is crap. And, and that thing can go to hell. Because this is what the Lord is calling us to be. He's calling us to be vulnerable people with each other. And the more vulnerable you are, let me tell you what will happen. The more people. Will familiarity will breed contempt. And the more vulnerable you are and the more you open yourself up to people, the more they will hurt you. And so therefore we can live as a church. Not like they lived, not like the father lived.